welcome back to Blackout, House of Bob's cyberpunk adventure set in the Vantal Megaplex and powered by the Sprawl RPG system. Hi, I'm Christina, and I'm playing Olivia Crow, who's on the run for Mass Corp while trying to figure out who's friend and who's foe. This is Schubert. I'll be playing Bunk, the cyberfunky audio junkie, packing beats on the Vantal streets. My name is Alex. I'll be playing Garrett, conspiracy theorist, wildcard, senior citizen. I'm Dan. I'll be playing Tiz, the hard-nosed reporter, tracking down corruption no matter the cost. And I'm Jake, your GM. If you want to support the show, check us out on Patreon, give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, or just tell your friends about us. Roll on. Last session, you succeeded in making it onto the Axiom Sabo. You survived the launch, disabled their sentry defense, and wrecked both satellites, throwing a serious wrench into the Axiom schemes. The bad news, it was a rough trip. Nausea, trauma, broken arms, gear, and feet. Although you've destroyed the satellites, you haven't made progress on the other part of your mission, finding some hard evidence of the what, who, how, and why behind the Axiom's plans, enough to put an end to it for good. Unfortunately, you have more immediate problems. A failed fire extinguisher taser combo attack on the canary outside the Sabo airlocks gave them enough time to trigger an alarm. The canary who hit the alarm catches himself on one of the railings that runs along the hallway, pushing off the wall and propelling himself towards the right end of the hallway, away from the airlocks and towards the rest of the station. Olivia and Tiss, having overshot their target, are on the left end of the hallway in a dead end, and Bunk and Garrett are still inside the Sabo's secret containers. What do? <laughs> I mean, I just can't believe that the extinguisher didn't work. It seems impossible. Goes against all previous experience, but... First thing that I'm going to do is um, I'm going to cybercom with Bunk, and mm-hmm. I'm going to tell him that I'm planning to make a distraction to uh, keep the heat off these other two, at least for a minute. And I ask if he wants a second to like hide himself or get out of here before I draw attention to us. Is this an old message? No, it's a new one. It's He's I, literally just saying it to you now. Oh, yeah, I just I just thought I got this earlier. Okay, yeah. <laughs> How? <laughs> did, did, it's a deja vu. <laughs> I have sent the same message many times. Yeah, I'm just Bunk is he's, getting a bit of a deja vu. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's go he's for experiencing it. time dilation. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> this is now. This is now. This is bad. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh yeah, do whatever you're going to do. Okay, Garrett um, just, like, yells as loud as he can for help. Help! Oh, God. Help! I'm hurt! Help! Oh, my God, Olivia. We need to go help him. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we were trying to tell that guy. <laughs> um, sure, your, your screams are uh, only slightly drowned out by the uh, alarm going off. Uh, um, I don't oh. think the guy's nearby, though, either. So the, the one that was that hit the alarm... He like started to push off and head towards the other end. Mm-hmm. As he hears you shout, Garrett, he he turns to look towards the Sabo, but continues his trajectory and runs into the or not runs, but floats into the hallway. Can I like limp out of this container and like try to be seen or something? By who? Yeah, there's know. there's no one else in this hallway yet. Whoever's around. Um security cameras. Ma- yeah. Somebody. Yeah, I mean, well, that's up to you, I guess, if you're physically able of it, but I assume so. <laughs> I got I got one little slip of health left, so I'm going to I'm going to stumble out there and yeah, wave about a bit. Okay, Olivia, new new plan. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we should still try to take out this guy because then we'll at least have some we could maybe lie. <laughs> I'm like on the other end of that. Is I think we should just give up now. <laughs> <laughs> Because where are we going to go in, in this? We don't know anybody, anywhere, anything of the, the space station. Okay. But that means we have to trust Bunk and Garrett to get us out of here. If you're cool with that, we can do that. I think Garrett's coming with us, yeah. <laughs> it looks like. <laughs> Garrett's only priority right now is get medical care. Okay. So I'm going to be like, Tis, we're narking on ourselves, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I shout at the guy. I'm like, wait, wait, we give up. We're terrible at this. <laughs> <laughs> I I try to put down the fire extinguisher, but then it just floats away. 
you get the idea that this guy is not looking for a fight and not looking for an encounter. He's not a security guard. He's just some dude that was trying to do his job. Mm -hmm. And he did his job, which is to alert the proper people to deal with this. And he turns the corner with a scared look back. And I'm like, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Olivia, we need to think of some sort of reasoning. I'm going with uh, space insanity. That we attacked him, you mean? Yeah. Or that we're we, here? We went, we went crazy inside the shuttle. Yeah. And once we got out, we just went crazy and attacked. I mean, that's not untrue. <laughs> it kind of feels like that's what happened. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm still not quite sure why we attacked that guy. But, <laughs> it was but we did. Yeah. I thought he would narc on us, which is what happened anyway. Well, all you did was open the door on him, right? No, this is a different guy entirely. Oh. So what I'm thinking is, yeah, space insanity sounds like a good upfront defense. <laughs> we're just standing here talking while we're waiting for security to come, by the way. <laughs> yeah. You don't know how long it's going to take for them to get here, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they're quick. Like. <laughs> but I think maybe we should just tell them why we came up here. And also why that would be why we're not astronauts who got space insane. <laughs> I'm, I'm concerned, though, because the axiom has seemed to like infiltrate a bunch of different levels of this. Sure, but so. at the same time, there's also seems to be people who are anti-axiom. Your conversation is cut short as you see two figures float around the corner. They're wearing outfits that look similar to the canary jumpsuits, but heavier and armored with a red stripe down one side. And what looks like a sort of light wireframe exoskeleton dotted with tiny maneuvering jets that fire as they turn the corner, killing their momentum and steadying them in the center of the room. Garrett puts his hand above his head. <laughs> On the yeah, floor. I'm going to need one of those suits. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. Hi. We give up? They're both carrying some sort of weapon. It looks like a sort of chunky pistol with a flat yeah, rectangular just barrel. Yeah, the taser. <laughs> yeah, they, they gesture it towards your taser and the fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate weapon. Yeah. And gesture for you to kind of to push it towards them. I just lightly tap it so it starts floating towards them. I'm sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know what happened yet. <laughs> the security? Yeah, they don't know. I mean, they know we have a gun. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just a taser. <laughs> With another small burst from the jets, one of the guards floats towards Tiss and Olivia. The other one floats towards Garrett. As soon as the guy tries to arrest me, though, I'm going to act like he broke my arm. <laughs> Be like, oh my God, police brutality. <laughs> because my arm is already broken. <laughs> no, I said as soon yeah. as he does. <laughs> Yeah, make That's sure he grabs that arm, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you just want them to be liable for your injuries. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just, yeah, tell them that you have brittle bones and you're not sure why they sent you to space. <laughs> Some sort of terrible test. He, he sighs and says, we have security cameras. <laughs> and they move to put your arms behind your back and you see they have these like plastic zip straps essentially that they go to tie up with. Yeah. I mean, I don't want them to tie me because I have a broken arm, but yes. They're, they're gentle. Okay. As gentle as they can be. <laughs> yeah, your, your arm is bending away. It shouldn't be. But I think we've said it by now, but it's probably red and swollen. It looks really gross. <laughs> the other guard uh, floats down to uh, Garrett and puts his hand up to uh, like a little microphone in his suit and says, we need a med team in Bay 3 right away. And then the guards start to gently push the three of you towards the station, or towards the rest of the station. Okay. Is the rest of the station also zero G or? As far as you know, yeah. I'm just wondering if I need to prepare myself for sudden gravity. <laughs> no. Bunk, are you doing anything while this is happening? Or are you uh, laying low? I'm going to lay low. It sounds yep. like everybody's given themselves up peacefully and the guards aren't trying to rough them up too bad. So I'm going to chill here. They seem to be respectful. They are uh, delicate with your broken arm and they, you know, push your head down so you don't <laughs> bump your head on the bulkhead. <laughs> What a gentleman. Yeah. How strange. This is not an experience Olivia's ever had <laughs> with authority. Chivalry isn't dead in space. <laughs> <laughs> it's not space dead. As you're uh, led through the station, you take in the sights. Behind the scenes here, it's pretty cramped and utilitarian. You know, there's lots of like cable housings and equipment strapped to the walls and fold out terminals and workstations. There's very little wasted space. That said, a lot of it looks disconcertingly old and lowest bidder. But there are a few small portholes through which you see a larger-than-usual but still distant moon. 
and occasional flashes of light from shuttles and other ships. You catch a glimpse of a custodian shuttle with a multitude of grabber arms and manipulators towing a big ball of space junk towards the station. Eventually, the three of you are split off. Olivia and Tiss are directed one way, and Garrett is led another way. Sounds like your plan might have actually worked. Well, so far. (laughs) Well, I think Garrett's going to med. Yeah, but Mm -hmm. who knows? But I mean, you guys need medical attention. They're not taking you there first, so. Yeah, but Garrett didn't assault anyone on his way out of the container, so. Uh, I'm okay, actually, but Olivia's a little banged up. Yeah, Tiss is actually the only one who's fine. (laughs) (laughs) It's the rest of us. Have you not taken anything? Uh, I took one harm. Okay. But he doesn't have a squished foot or (laughs) a broken arm. Oh, yeah, that's what happened to me. I got a squished foot. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, keep that in mind that you're bleeding continuously right now. Yeah. I think the body does have a... Oh, wait, no, we're in space. Fuck. You can bandage yourself up. Okay. <laughs> I assume you guys have done that already. <laughs> Finally, Tiss and Olivia, you are led into what looks to be a small brig. A simple gray room with a cot and facilities, and that's about it. You're uh, pushed inside and you float into the center of the room and the door slides shut behind you. They don't even want to ask us questions. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. They have to review the footage, yeah. I guess so. Is there anyone else in the brig with us? No. Okay. No, it looks like there was like a few small rooms, so there might have been someone else in the other rooms, but... We're in the same? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Uh, Yeah, I would like to survey our surroundings, I guess. Yeah, again, it's pretty simple. There's, you know, just kind of a flat gray wall and a cot and bathroom facilities and the door which is now slid shut and you can see that there is a like a little uh, window slit that they can open up and that's about it yeah but is it one of those sci-fi jails that it's like a force field or (laughs) actual bars not not bars it's it's just like a solid metal door oh okay so there's no like we can't see out or anything not at the moment no yeah again there's a little like window thing it looks like they can open from the outside right yeah bars are a luxury (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but also, if it was a force field, that would have been bad, too. <laughs> hmm. Force field ain't cheap. That's true. I don't think we're going to break out from in here, but... We ain't got nothing but time to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could also try to figure out our, our story. I know you want to tell the truth, but I don't want to necessarily give away all of our cards. So, if you guys are doing that, then I'm going to ask Garrett and Bunk to take off their headphones for a bit. (gasps) Oh, spicy. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, Olivia starts looking for seams. There's got to be some seams. This place looks junky as hell. (laughs) But while I'm doing that, I assume that I'm waiting for Tiss to say something because I'm not saying anything yet. Okay. So we want to mention the axiom. Mm-hmm. And what we're doing up here, we probably don't want to drop any names just for safety's sake. Okay. Don't want to narc on anybody, but I don't know. Um, is there a way we can, can we even comms down to Earth at all? I don't think so. Isn't it? I thought our comms didn't work up here. You've discovered that you can like directly connect with each other, mm-hmm. but there yeah. isn't a, a link to the to the network and on Earth. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's just three of us though, right? Is what yep. I say. Yeah, just the three of us. <laughs> yeah. Poor Garrett. If only I hadn't locked that guy in the ship. Hopefully I, I'll tell them in time before they can get him out. <laughs> do we want to mention that we smashed the satellites or do we want to feign that uh, they are destroyed by the way we thought they were? I mean, I feel like I do want to tell them that part. See, that's part of the whole telling the truth thing. But I would like to try telling them that in order to gauge reaction. Because then I think we'll find out how pro-Axiom they are, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Okay, so maybe maybe we mention that we smash the satellites, mm-hmm. see if they have any sort of reaction to that. And then uh, if they don't seem to, then we can tell them the rest of our story. Exactly. Okay. I mean, I think they'll have a little bit of a reaction, <laughs> but you know what I mean, like suspicious. <laughs> yeah, like there's levels of upset. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, one is like, oh, I'm going to file paperwork. One's like, you've yeah. ruined my plan. Yeah, exactly. One's annoyed <laughs> with us, which we're used to. And <laughs> the other one is like... Yeah, I know that face. We got to call Earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems smart. Okay, we'll start with that and 
we might have to do a little play it by ear, but we'll see what they ask us, I guess. Yeah, I have a feeling we'll probably be separated, though, just FYI. It's very rare that they do dual uh, interrogations. Okay, well, I'm going to leave that in your hands then for how much you want to say. I'm not going to say much. I. That sounds good. So whatever, whatever you feel like revealing, you go right ahead. Olivia, do you want to make an actual roll out of looking around? Yep. Or? Which one's this one? It'd be assessed then, Hedge. Oh, I got a nat 10 plus one. Finally. <laughs> Rolling a little higher this time. Okay, well, I mean, you've got those three questions. Potential complications. Notice despite an effort to conceal it. How is blank vulnerable? How can I avoid trouble here? Best way in, way out, way past. Gain advantage. Who or what is my biggest threat? Who or what is in control here? And remember, you can save them. Yes. I think I will, at the minimum, go with, how is this cell vulnerable to me? (laughs) Because that's what I've been looking for, is like some sort of uh, seam I could maybe jimmy a little bit. (laughs) There would be some kind of air recycling system. You know, obviously there's no natural oxygen here. They have to pipe it through the whole uh, right. uh, facility. So there is a like a vent in the ceiling. You know, it looks to be secure, but certainly less secure than, you know, just a solid metal wall. Question two, still zero G, correct? Yeah. Okay. So I can float up there and kind of take a look at it. It's, again, it's it's like welded in there and it's it's pretty secure, but it would be the most vulnerable spot here anyway, other than the door, but. Right. Okay. Well. I'm going to see if vents are usually connected. Like, they usually have wirings within vents. Maybe I can try to stick my fingers out of there and see if I can grab anything. (laughs) (laughs) I think that would probably be something you would have to kind of roll for. But I I think let's leave that for now. Sure. After not too long, the door swooshes open, slides into the wall, and two people enter. One is one of the guards that brought you in at first, and the other is a new individual, a middle-aged man, noticeable fake tan and athletic build, muscular but compact. He wears a canary uniform with two red stripes and a name badge on a lanyard around his neck that reads Boots. Well, I'm definitely hanging upside down at this point, <laughs> sure. looking at them. You got it. And I'm saying, hey, boss. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he, I shrug. <laughs> yeah. uh, he doesn't look particularly amused by that and the door slides closed behind them and he says you've got some explaining to do I think mm, yes that's, that's, that's a fair <laughs> assessment sir. I agree <laughs> where well, would you like us to start right at the beginning um, well we have been investigating a an organization on Earth. You may have heard of them. I don't know actually how much Earth news you guys get, but there's a church called the Axiom. And uh, yeah, it's kind of led us up to the station, in which case we've, we're sort of uh, trying to stop a big plot. And I just shrug my shoulders again. You know how it is. <laughs> and, and who is we, he asks. I point down. Or up, depending on <laughs> yeah. the orientation of the ship, or the space station. Yeah, and I point to myself. And then I'm like, and also that guy in sick bay. But he's harmless. Yeah, we probably shouldn't have brought an old man, <laughs> thinking back on it now. <laughs> yeah, brittle bones. Could you possibly be a little more specific? Who are you? Oh, uh, hi, Olivia. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm Tiz. I'm a reporter. And uh, that's our good friend... Garrett the Immortal in, in the sick bay right now, probably. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we're just a, a ragtag team of people who care about stopping the Axiom. Stopping them from doing what? Well, we got a huge tip that they've been sending satellites into space via, you guys, the vessel. And we wanted to stop at least one of the deliveries, which we were successful at. It was on the ship that we were on, and we kind of smashed it up, just FYI. Yeah, that's not great news. I'm responsible for that stuff. Sure. But you probably don't want to be responsible for all the lives it would have killed, too. Can we gauge his reaction to hearing we smashed up his satellites? Or these satellites? Specifically? (laughs) Yeah. 
Um, I, I think Olivia's uh, assessment earlier was correct that he looks annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Canary is responsible for the safe transport of cargo from A to B. So Yeah, but it doesn't look like he's about to like call somebody right away or anything like no. that. Okay, so he's just mad at us. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. That's, we, we can, can work, work with that. that. Yeah. <laughs> now, I know you're mad. but <laughs> I understand it's going to be paperwork, dude, but these satellites... Again, how much Earth news do you guys get just def- <laughs> just out of curiosity? He asks you some more questions about what exactly you're trying to do and what you think the Axiom is up to. It sounds like you're spilling the means at this oh, point. Yeah. You're not I'm holding anything very back. very upfront okay. about what the satellite does and everything. Sure. But again, I don't even know if he knows much about that. <laughs> he doesn't like go, oh, what are you talking about or anything. Right. So but he's also not like, you know. Not showing his cards. Yeah, it's not showing exactly, trying to keep some cards, but right. he doesn't look particularly surprised or taken aback by anything you say quite yet. So uh, I just wanted to get a uh, like a fast talk style role. Sure. I think Olivia was doing the talk in there. Yeah, I'll assist. Yeah, you can assist though. Yes. Uh, style. Okay, I assist you. Hooray. Ooh, I got a nine plus your one. That's a 10. Cool, perfect. You get the idea that he thinks you're at least a little space crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. I, I bring that up when I'm talking. <laughs> but he has a, a responsibility to at least look into this. Mm-hmm. He turns to the other guard that's with him and says, uh, run them through the system. See if you can figure out exactly who these people are. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're still, you're still a wanted terrorist. Uh-huh. And, and, and you see the guard that pulls out a tablet and kind of holds it up towards you. And uh, Before he does that, like before I see him type in Olivia on yeah. there, because I did just give him my name straight yeah. up. I mean, I, I don't even know if they know what my real name is, but uh, in the tabloids, I go like, okay, you know, just to put my cards on the table, I've been in trouble for this kind of stuff before. <laughs> I'm just going to put it out there. It's always been for a good cause, in my opinion. <laughs> That's literally what they always say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but, you know, she's kind of grasping at straws yeah, a little bit on no, that. sure. <laughs> the guard kind of finishes this little scan or facial recognition grab of you and starts punching in some buttons on the tablet. And the two of them walk out of the room. Now let's pop over to check in with Bunk. At this point, Bunk, you've been hiding out in the container for a little while now. You guess maybe an hour has passed. You have heard some activity outside. It sounds like someone's trying to clean up the mess on the inside of the container. I just wanted to see, like, are are you waiting for an opportunity or what's kind of your plan here? So I think my plan is to hide out here until things chill out. And then when there's a free moment, I was planning on uh, busting out of here and just sneaking away, potentially. I understand there's probably a lot of people around this spot, but I'm still in my uh, canary uniform, right? Yeah. So I figure maybe it's not the weirdest thing that they, those guys might be like walking around the station or like moving things in and out of <laughs> the Savos. So maybe I could just act like I've been like sent over here to move something out if anybody spots me. Obviously, this area right now is a little hotter because of uh, what happened, but yeah, as a general rule, yes. You think as long as you're inconspicuous, you should be able to move about. Sweet. Okay. I put on my inconspicuous <laughs> sandals and start sneaking out. Sure. So yeah, after a little <laughs> while, you hear whoever was on the inside of the container go, uh, oh, lunchtime, and walk off. You wait for a few more minutes to make sure it's quiet and you crack the door open and you see, yeah, that he's kind of just, you know, started to like pile up all the bits and pieces of the satellites and (laughs) that kind of thing and to kind of restore some semblance of order for presumably some kind of investigation later. So do you have an idea of where you're trying to go? Uh, I think into the station proper, like sure, if I can somehow get past any kind of security because we're not on the moon. We're on nope. the, uh, <laughs> what's it called again? Lyca Station. Lyca Station, thank yeah, you. Which, which is kind of you know, the hub, the midway mm-hmm. point. It's essentially a, a terminal, a transfer terminal, so right. to speak. Right now you're in the behind the scenes employee area, but yes, there is mm-hmm. you know just like a public terminal, so yeah. to speak, on the inside. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get to yeah. is to like a, a way more public area where I yeah. can kind of blend into a crowd. Yeah, that'd basically be, you know, like the the waiting area where people are waiting for their next shuttle flight or their transfer, I should say, and that kind of Mm -hmm. thing. I want to get to the souvenir shops. 
That's my goal. <laughs> oh, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, goal number one, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Sounds good. So, yeah, we'll get you to do some kind of sneaky sneak here. Honestly, I might just bribe this guy. <laughs> you see that like the worker that was right here has moved on. Mm-hmm. But there is probably, I, I think, just because, again, there was an alarm here very recently that there is just mm-hmm. one guard kind of hanging out at the entrance. Yeah, I mean, if you just want to straight up bribe him, I think he's probably <laughs> going to look the other way. Or you could try to, you know, play it cool and just uh, look inconspicuous and wander on by or... yeah. I mean, in my mind, that always works well, but just never (laughs) in practice. I think in this circumstance, just because this is so important to get out of here without arousing suspicion, I think I'm just going to act like a regular canary worker who's sneaking like illegal stuff on board and be like, here you go, sir. Here's (laughs) Here's your stipend and I'll be on my way. Okay. I don't know what I should give him. One credit worth of fruit. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you do have that. <laughs> well, I guess we should probably get you to roll style just to see. Sure. But you have something to offer. So like, it's not, not going to go horribly wrong if you fail, but just to see how well it goes. Sweet. I rolled a four and I have plus one style, so only a five. So I'm going to bribe the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that you know, this, this guy is on a bit of high alert right now. But so let's call it two cred and Oof. he'll uh, look the other way. Dang. Okay, buddy. <laughs> uh, hazard pay, he says. Don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> all right. I'm out of here. Yep. Now that you're past kind of the hot zone, so to speak, you keep to yourself. Just, you know, float past people that are working and look busy. Nobody really bothers you much. You don't really know where you're going, <laughs> but you kind of float no. around a little bit until you get the sense that you're, you're kind of heading towards the center of the station. And eventually you do find a door that looks like it leads into the public area. Sweet. You uh, slide the door open a little bit to see where you're at. And you see what basically looks like, yeah, like a big airport waiting area. You see a, a variety of people sitting in uh, medium comfortable chairs. You know, there are a few, uh, like a small food court and a you know, gift shop and that kind of thing, a duty-free store. I go to the gift shop. <laughs> Perfect. I am headed towards, like, the, the stores. I, I have some things I need to purchase. Okay. With my zero money. <laughs> One thing you also see mm-hmm. is the uh, baggage claim area. Mm. And you know that the bag of gear that you guys sent up would be there. Yeah. Oh, I was just thinking I can steal other other people's stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you got your own stuff. You don't need to steal it. Okay. <laughs> that might be good. Do we have just like gear? What am I trying to say? In our gear, do we have gear? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, it was not specified. So it's, it's just like the gear card. You can say okay, what it is. Sweet. Like, yeah. yeah. I was just thinking like a change of clothes to not, mm, yes, to arouse suspicion. For sure. So I'm either going to try to find our gear in the baggage claim, and if not, I'm going to try to steal some from one of the shops. (laughs) (laughs) Like this gear drop was set up beforehand. You have a a matching claim tag and that kind of thing. Okay, so it's not too tough. No, you maybe look a little awkward trying to play it cool, (laughs) but it's just a matter of grabbing this bag off of the conveyor belt. Cool. Congratulations. You have seven gear. <laughs> seven? Yeah, you guys sent up seven. <laughs> oh my God, Jesus <laughs> Christ. All right, I, I have a nice suit. I have, no, I'm just going to yeah. spend so, it all on on threads. So I guess now six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I actually am going to have like something nice to wear so I could sure. fit in with the rich and famous potentially. Sounds good. Uh, is Adira's mother, she went up here, right? Like she went to like a station? Anika, as far as you know, was Anika. destined for the station. She was there when the delay happened and was complaining about the delay of her flight. So you get the idea that she should be here somewhere. After you've changed, uh, you look through the crowd and sitting in the fancier side <laughs> of the lobby, you see Anika in a sky blue sari and a bunch of like gold jewelry and a small little entourage around her. Perfect. I was hoping to spot her and... My plan is to approach her in a smooth and casual way. (laughs) (laughs) I think I have something on her, and I want to force her into some kind of confessional, basically. Okay. But we'll see how that goes. You start heading over there, but we're going to pop over to Garrett now. 
at some point you are taken a different direction from Olivia and Tiss, and you are led off another hallway and eventually into a small med bay. And a doctor there starts pulling out equipment from various cabinets on the walls and starts getting to work on you right away. Thank goodness. And after a short amount of time passes, you can reduce your harm clock by two. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. So what does that put you at now? I'm now at 2100, so half. I'm halfway there. Perfect. The doctor is reading some charts and things like that, and then a man walks into the room. Actually, two people walk into the room. One is one of the guards that you saw originally. Okay. And the other person is a, a middle-aged man, noticeable fake tan, athletic build, muscular but compact. He wears a canary uniform with two red stripes and a name badge on a lanyard around his neck that reads Boots. Boots. And he says, uh, who are you? Why are you on my station? Before I answer, am I able to, like, test to see if I have any sort of, like, local connection with the other three over comms? Is there a dial tone? <laughs> yeah, why don't you roll uh, mine? Seven. Not in this moment. I think like okay. you can tell that there isn't the same network, same frequencies that you would usually connect to here. So it would okay. probably need a little rejiggering. You'd have to sync up again, so to speak, right? Right. Hit the Bluetooth button on both uh, devices. Yeah. So right now, no. But once you guys get back together, you can probably figure okay. out something out. Again, before I answer him, I have an Intel that mm-hmm. is left over from Detective Wilson. Yeah. So some sort of information he gave us about this mission that was coming up. And if I can, what I'd like to use this intel for is to know that Wilson had told us that there's like an identifier that Axiom people who have like infiltrated this organization use to like, you know, identify each other. Maybe like, um, okay, they like rip the stitches out of like a certain sleeve or they like, you know, keep a you know, a black card in their back pocket or something like, you know, something they, they would sure. identify with each other. Is that a reasonable use of an Intel card? Uh, yeah, I think we could do that. Okay. And then I would like to quickly scan around the room and see if any of these people here, like Boots or the doctors or whatever, mm-hmm. like any of them have this identifier. Sounds good. Well, we'll get you to roll assess. That's a nine plus one, ten. Yeah, I, I like the idea that, like I think you said, like a black card or something like that. So it's something that they put on their name badge that uh, would signify them as a Axiom member. Yeah, that regular folks might not notice if they yeah. weren't looking for it. Yeah. Doctors in the clear. Boots in the clear. Okay. The security guard that brought you in, not in the clear. Oh, shit. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> One of the three other people in this room are suspect. Shit. Okay, so he's asked me why I'm here. I'm going to pull the senile man act. <laughs> I'm going to say Classic. that I like I can't remember how I got here and that my head hurts and I feel nauseous. Um, which, you know, maybe I have a concussion, right? That seems yeah reasonable. Sure. So you can roll a style then? Seven. Boot starts listing off uh, this you know list of questions and the doctor's like, oh, he's, he's still recovering. Take it slow. But Boot seems, you get the sense that he's a little tired of bullshit at the moment. Uh-huh. And you think maybe your ruse has worked, but he just doesn't really care that much. <laughs> okay. And so he's continuing to ask you questions and expecting answers, but you know, it sounds like you're not giving him anything. Can I tell him that I'm willing to answer some questions if it's just me and him in the room, if everyone else leaves. You can tell him that. He motions to the doctor to leave, but he keeps the security guard with him. And I say, no, like, just you and me. Tells the guard to run you through the system first, and you see he has, like, a little tablet that he kind of does a little scan of you and then uh, starts typing on the keypad, but then steps outside. The door closes behind him, and it's just you and Boots. Okay, I, uh, like, motion for him to get really close to me so I can, like, whisper in his ear. He shakes his head and says, we can talk from here. That's fine. Okay. And I ask, have you heard of the Passing Angel Axiom? More today than usual, yes. And I tell him that I and at least one of the passengers with me um, have been tasked with taking down a Passing Angel infiltration on this station and that the lives of millions of people are in danger 
He seems to ponder this for a little bit, but doesn't really give you much. It seems like he's just internalizing it. I tell him about the black card. Okay. That the security guard has. I think he would say, um, it sounds like there's some more that we need to talk about. Why don't you come with me? And I tell him I'm happy to tell him more as long as he can guarantee my safety. He kind of shrugs and says, you seem to know more about what's going on than I do. So I'm going to do my best, but. All right. That's good enough. He uh, leads you back into the hallway and down a variety of hallways until you recognize that you're in sort of like a brig area. And there's a few small rooms here. Let's head over to Tiss and Olivia. You see the door open to the brig and you see Boots, the guy who was questioning you before. Mm -hmm. And he gently pushes Garrett into the room with you. How's Garrett look? Better, actually. Much better. It looks like he's been patched up. That's great. I go, hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, hey, Garrett. How you, how you feeling? Gar- Garrett gives you, a, you know, a bit of a shrug and a nod, you know. Right. Doing great then, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And the shrug and the nod is followed by a shout and a discharge of a weapon. <gasps> Whoa. As you see, uh, it looks like a little thick disc that is flying through the air towards Boots. And at the last moment, it sort of bursts open and kind of like the electrical net that Olivia used before opens up. I go, hey, that's mine. (laughs) (laughs) Except instead of electrifying, it appears to magnetize and it pins Boots up against the wall of the station. I'm not sure if that means the guy's on our side or not. (laughs) (laughs) And you see one of the guards that brought you in earlier. Mm -hmm. He floats up to the hallway in front of the brig door and presses the button to close the door. So is the boots guy on our side of the door, I mean? Yeah, he is pinned up against the inside of the brig wall. Okay, so it's the four of us in here. Mm -hmm. And and the guard's on the other side of the door? Yeah, and you hear a swoosh as the door slides into the wall closed again. And so I turn to the guy, boots... I say, see, it's not just space madness. (laughs) I tell him, I told you so. (laughs) Now's not the time, Garrett. (laughs) Well, kind of. If not now, then when? Yeah, Yeah. exactly. (laughs) If I can't gloat before I die, then... (laughs) We may not make it, so... I mean, that's going to be on his tombstone, I told you so. (laughs) (laughs) See you in two weeks. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of House of Bob. If you're enjoying the show, you can give us a review on Apple Podcasts, tell a friend, or hit us up on social media. We're at the House of Bob on most platforms. All our videos are also up on YouTube if you prefer to listen that way. You can also talk to us at our Discord server, and there's a bunch of fans that like to chat there too. It's a good little community. All the links to our social media and other websites are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show financially, check out our Patreon. It's 35 hours of bonus content, including a monthly bonus recording, like director's commentary and one-shots. It's also some RPG zines and a monthly blog post of role-playing game content. Thanks to our existing Patreon sponsors, it's Bluck at 12, Christine Braille, Elias Anderson, Jessica, Jessica Colvin, Josh Jordan, Keith Haddad, Kieran Duffy, Luke Conroy, Mark Boykin, Mary Margaret, Pavel Shin, Ray Kearney, Scooter Emerson, Mike, Tom Inns, Tom Wesley, Tyler Kay, and Volt. Artwork for this episode was by Jake at Javix. Audio production was by Alex of Astronomic Audio. And the music was by John Julius, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. Thanks very much for listening. Have a great day. Roll on. Stay funky. Cyber Junkie. Peace. Peace. Peace.